so we've, we've got our motor, it's a bit of a tangle here, if I'll take this out. We've got our motor connected up to, uh, to an ohmmeter, and we're measuring roughly, a, it's, it's a bit dodgy here, but it's roughly about 3 ohms there. And so we're, we're going to measure, we're, we're going to put the motor to a power supply. We're going to apply six volts to the motor. There's the six volts there. You all see that. But roughly speaking, it's drawing about mm, 80, 90 milliamps here. I'm going to round that up to about 100 milliamps just to make things a little easier for us. Theory tells us that we should be drawing 2 amps. 3 ohms, 6 volts applied, we should be drawing 2 amps. But we're not. We're drawing... We're drawing close to 100 milliamps, give or take. So from Ohm's law, resistance, the voltage divided by the current, will give us 600 ohms. 600 ohms. Therefore, the working voltage for this motor in this, in this situation, working voltage, V is equal to I times R. We measured the current at 100 milliamps. And we, we've already measured the resistance at being 3 ohms. Therefore, for this, this motor is only working on a voltage, a positive voltage of 0 0.3 volts, even though we apply 6 volts to it. We've only got a working voltage of 0 0.3 volts. That's because the motor, whilst acting as a motor, is also a generator and it's generating 5.7 volts in opposition. That's what PAC EMF is. One of the things we need to know is that whenever we pass current through a conductor, it creates a magnetic field around it. If we want to find the direction of that magnetic field, we can use the right hand screw rule. We wrap our right hand around the conductor with the thumb pointing in a direction of the current and the direction our fingers go round tells us the direction of the magnetic field. So it's quite simple to understand, if I change the direction of the current, the direction of the magnetic field will change. And that is the screw rule. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got our, our motor coil that we had from before, like that. And this is a speaker, but you may know that a speaker is a magnet. And this is, we've just got this hooked up to an oscilloscope, just to show that as we get relative movement between the magnet and the coil, we get an induced voltage. That waveform there is an induced voltage. And the faster we move it, and the closer it is, quite difficult to do actually, the faster the, faster the relative movement and the, the stronger the magnetic field or the closer the magnetic field is to the coil, the bigger the voltage will be. And that's covered in Faraday's law, which tells us the voltage induced in the coil is equal to the strength of the magnetic field, the length of the coil, and the velocity, how fast we move the coil. Right, so we've got a, we've got a simple small DC motor here, set up to a DC power supply. Uh, we can see that the voltage at the moment is about three quarters of a volt. And we've got um, probably about 70, 80 milliamps of current. And we got, we're going to increase the voltage, and you can't see it, we should hear it in a minute. I want you to watch the difference, what happens with the voltage here, what's happening with this current here. Remember, Ohm's law tells us that if we double the voltage, we should double the current. It's not really happening, is it?
Now I'm going to take the, the, the voltage right off. I'm going to switch it off just for a second. I'm going to remove the cover from the motor. Oops. Need to be careful here on this bit. There we go. So we can see a motor, three pole motor, three windings. This is a pole formed here, here and here. The important bit we want to actually look at this part is what happens when we switch now now look at the difference without the motor being inserted without these coils being inserted into the field formed by these two permanent magnets in here there's a north and south pole in there okay look what happens to the current now as we adjust the voltage upwards We can already see that even at just about three quarters of a volt, we've almost got the same current as we had at 12 volts. We won't go up too far. You can see that the relationship between current and voltage is now linear. If I go up too much further than that, this coil will burn out. You can see how Passing a current through the coil creates an electromagnet which is much stronger on one pole than the other two poles. So what we've got here is, is a motor, and I've got it hooked up to a, an ammeter, here and here, and it's on the two, 200 milliamp scale, and all I'm going to do is I want you to watch, I'm just going to move this, and you see we generate a current, it's only a small current, but it just goes to show that if I put it in one direction, the current goes in a minus, and if we go in the other direction, the current goes in a plus direction, like that. Okay, and I want you to, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this one. So the clockwise one produces, as I, as I move this little wheel clockwise, it produces a minus current. See that? And this is related to something called the right hand rule, Fleming's right hand rule, it's a generator rule. And we've got three fingers like this, well, a thumb and two fingers. Here's my thumb. My thumb is the motion. This, this forefinger here. That's the field, the magnetic field, and the centre finger is the direction of the current. And when we look at paper, the current's either flowing into the paper or away from the paper. And if I relate that there, this is a conductor, this is a magnetic field. With the field pointing in this direction, an upward motion will produce a current flowing into the paper. If it was flowing out of the paper, we would give it this symbol here, and the magnetic field associated with it would be in the opposite direction. Okay, so now we've got a motor, and from, from just before we saw that by, by producing a, a clockwise motion with the motor on, on the meter before where we had it set up, it created a, a current that was in a negative direction. Now the meter is set up in exactly the same way now. Um, as we increase this voltage here. I'm only going to do it a little bit just so you can see. You see, so there we have a clockwise motion. But the motor rule, which is the opposite to the generator rule, we see we see we've got we have actually have a positive current. So when we use the the this machine as a generator, the same direction of motion creates a negative current but as a motor, it creates a positive current. And that's down to something called... Okay, so we've looked at the right-hand rule, which is a generator rule, and we've just looked at the motor acting as a motor, and there's a different rule, the left-hand rule, for the motor. And the left-hand rule, same thing, we have the field, 
we have the motion and we have the current. And we notice for the same motion as before, so moving upwards as we did before, we get a current that goes in the opposite direction, travels towards us. This is because of something called Lenz's Law. Now Faraday's Law tells us that whenever we move a conductor in a magnetic field, that conductor will have a voltage induced across it which causes a current to flow through the conductor. The conductor, though, always sets up a magnetic field which is in opposition to the movement. So if we try to move a conductor through a magnetic field, the current flowing through the conductor will set up a magnetic field which is in opposition to that motion. And this is called Lenz's Law. This is why we have something called back EMF. Back EMF is like saying, if we try to apply 12 volts across the motor, the motor will act as a generator. It will generate a voltage which is in opposition to that applied voltage. Could be 8 volts, could be 9 volts. It just depends on the characteristics of the motor. But we never, ever get a situation when we use a DC motor where the full 12 volts is applied across it. And we've looked at that earlier. Okay, cheers, mate.